Hi guys, welcome back after the short break here at Dr. Peppo also tournament. We'll be going into the next match. Uh, as we said before the break, it will be Xorxy versus Pesty. And you are the you said you know the Pesty guy. So um can you repeat what was his favorite class? Uh priest. Priest. You think he will play it right now in this class? Um I know that he likes priest versus players he considers worse than him. And even versus players he considers best than him, usually. But he said Priest is a class that just beats the worst players, the worst players than him. So I think that in an open qualifier, you should always go with uh, what you think can beat the masses. So Priest should be good for Pesty. I, I expect Pre Pesty to play Priest. Pesty is also one of the first guys that played uh, the, 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 te the mid range tempo mage. The one mm -hmm. with like flame cannons and stuff like that. He got number one in one season. Exactly after Sixo got uh, number one legend in like the first day. Pesty got it in the second day and uh, took number one from Sixo with the mid range mage. So okay. that are the two days that I know he got number one with, and he hold it for like three four days with each uh, deck each time. With uh, once with priest like three seasons ago, and uh, once with uh, mid range mage like two two seasons ago. Well, the that's that's really cool, but I wanted to go back to the priest because um, what I think about priest is the fact that it's really bad in current meta game, right? We have a lot of handlocks, and priest is usually really bad against a handlock, and also priest is bad against uh, face hunters, right? Um, I would disagree on the first statement. Uh, I would say that you can build priest to beat anything in the game. You can build priest with double death, double light bomb, Vol'jin, and I guarantee you, you would never lose to handlock ever again. You can build <laughs> priest. You you said the same about Gara Handlock losing to an aggro, and then oh look at that! Face Hunter just rolled through him like a knife, hot knife through butter. Well, it depends. Priest, priest has the hero power to beat aggro. Handlock doesn't even uh, have the hero power. Like I wouldn't build Handlock exactly anti aggro. I would just build it normally, and I would beat mm -hmm. aggro and mm -hmm. control. But with priest, you can build it full anti aggro, and you'll beat all the aggro. Or you can build it full anti handlock control, whatever, and you'll beat all the control. You can go like double mind control and uh, all the janky stuff. You can also play like uh, double zombie chow, double holy smite, double whatever, and you will beat all the aggro with priest. Priest is a deck that you can build in many ways. So if the meta is all aggro or if the meta is all control, priest is gonna be good. And now it's really varied, really explosive meta. So I don't think you can uh, play priest that effective. You have to get lucky a bit, but let's see. Yeah. Pesty yeah. knows what he's doing. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to the priest. If he even plays the priest, we'll have to see that. And as you, as you know, we're playing here a conquest best of three. So the first player that secures two decks, so he wins two games. It's just through and to the next round. So it's mm -hmm. kind of different from the usual conquest best of five. Okay, so now, so now, Lothar, what do you think about the mid-range mage, the second day that Pesty likes a lot? You play that too, I play that too. It's... what do you think? Ah, the mid-range... like, the mid-range mage was my... one of my favorite decks from the time... from the first Seed Story Cup, when I played that deck and it was really, really great. That was more of a secret mage too, because it played, um... Kirin. Kirin, yeah. Uh, mid-range mage plays one Kirin too, it usually plays like yeah, one Yeah, you know, Kirin. one is like... <laughs> it's like... You get it only. I, I can't even say how much time because uh, how much times because um, when you play decks like mid range tempo or mech mage, you draw only like 13 cards in the whole whole game. I don't think it's more. It's like you don't have a draw um, draw engine in it, so that's the problem. The same problem with shaman. You just have to rely on your top decks and on the sheer power of the cards you have in your deck. So cards like Mad Scientist, if they don't draw the secret, you're usually losing the game. Because Mad Scientist just gives you so much tempo. It's free mana and a free card, which also thins your deck, uh, which means you're basically playing uh, another game than other players, right? Because you're, yeah. you, you, you have like a 29, 28 card deck, and that's that's a lot when it comes to chances of drawing a particular card. Let's let's say an example, Antonidas, which will just seal a deal uh, to win the game most of the time. Yeah, many times when I used to play Temple Mage, I played something a little bit more special. The ways you can play it are the following. You either go double scientist, one Kirin, three or four secrets, and then you risk drawing the secrets, but you can also gain huge rewards by drawing it to scientist and Kirin first. And yeah. if you draw secret and Kirin, it's also okay. 
Mm -hmm. Or you can just mm -hmm. play No Kirin, Double Scientist, One Secret. Have you ever tried that? I, I tried it with One cool. Secret, but um, when if it you comes play with to... One Secret, if you play with One Secret in, in mm -hmm. Mech Mage or any type of Mage, you gain so much advantage by getting the Scientist, and you'll almost never draw into the Secret without getting the Scientist first because you run two Scientists only one Secret, you throw the Secret away in the middle again, you keep the Scientist, you know. Yeah. Okay, but. What do you use for the second secret then? I mean, what's the spot? What do you take in that spot? Something bigger. Ragnaros, like, I don't know. Ragnaros. Okay. <laughs> well, I was playing in Mech Major already with Ragnaros. I was like playing <laughs> Antonidas, Dr. Poom, Ragnaros because I just liked it. And Ragnaros is great against Freeze Mages because it basically wins game. If you just drop it on turn 8. And you just also... play Pyroblast. Hit them in the face. <laughs> yeah, that's also a, a cool idea. Um, Maybe if it would be for for eight mana like like before, that would be cool. But yeah, but tempo mage is really potent, but at the same time it can crash so badly. Like if you draw it, if you draw it badly, then you can't do anything, I guess. Well, that's every deck in Hearthstone. No deck is like super consistent. Green Patron was really consistent, but then if your opponent plays Handlock or Double Bro Warrior, it starts to lose consistently and not win consistently. Handlock is not so, it's not a big problem in my in my eyes in my opinion, I guess. Yeah. Well, you you always have the frothing and you can just kill it in one turn uh, or just go face from turn 1. With with small minions and just turn free frothing into double wyverns and stuff, uh, so there's a way to win against handlocks. But yeah, I agree with you that Patron was really really strong in the beginning of uh, the meta game when when he appeared, but now it's kind of lacking. It's like a tier two or even three, I would say. Oh uh, no, no, it's still tier one. It depends on uh, how uh, good the list is and how refined. Okay, so we jump right into the game, and we see Pesty on a really weird deck, Dragon Paladin! Here you go, Lotter. And hmm. Sorcy is playing Druid. <laughs> I wanted to see the Priest. But okay. And Sorcy is playing uh, Druid. I think well, Priest would do pretty good versus Druid, but how is Dragon Paladin versus Druid? Do you have any experience with that deck? Uh, Paladin was always favored against Druid, right? Because of the um, Peacekeepers, because of the Equalities and stuff like that. And with the introduction of file elementals in the form of Blackwing Corruptor, I think that that's a really, really great thing. But the Blackwing Technician, it, if he will draw into an Azure Drake, or whatever, just a dragon, the Blackwing Technician will be such a great card, because then he trades for the uh, Zombie Chow with ease. But he doesn't have the dragon yet, so it all relies on the next draw. We see some interesting cards from Sorcy too. Uh, I don't really agree with Druid of the Flame, it's a card that only seen competitive play when Orange played it at C Story Cup and then he said after the tournament that he regretted picking that. Like, that yep. card is almost never better than the Shade of Naxxramas, it's like, almost never. Look at he, that. He, he, he got the dragon. The, he got the concept, which is really yeah. important, because now the, uh, the Blackwind Technician can trade, it will be still at more than uh, 2 HP after, after the attack, so... Uh, only Rav can kill it, like instantly, and no Rav into Hero Power, an example. And uh, about the Druid of the Flame, I, I guess you're right, I don't like the Druid of the Flame also, but the only scenario when it's, when it's better is against pure aggro decks like Face Hunter or the old zoo, but no one plays the old zoo anymore. I would say that versus the, even versus aggro, Shade is better because it consistently grows and you trade. You force them to trade back, and then they instantly lose value. And if they don't trade back, they will lose even more value. Well, Druid of the Flame is 2-5. We cannot uh, grow it to more HP. Uh, also, do you think it was good to coin the free drop? Sometimes it, it looks shiny to get the advantage instantly, but now his turn 3 sucks. His turn 4 sucks, most likely. Like, if you would go Hunted Creeper, he could trade with a Zombie Chow. Like, you don't even care about the Zombie Chow. Then you play your free drop, and then you can coin 5 drop into yeah. 5 drop. I think that's, like, yeah. huge... I, I would do that. You're right, you're right. I actually agree with you. Calling out the Black Fantasy was not so important at the point uh, at this point of the game, but getting the Dragon Consort was actually alternating your strategy. Because if you know you have the Dragon, then you can pl plan accordingly to, co to your coin. Like, okay, I can coin out Black uh, the Black Queen Corruptor on turn 4, right? And yes. that also changes a lot. Now he needs to play like Hunted Keeper Hero Power. Oh, he can play Hunted Keeper Mini Bot, but is that that good? Of course, it's pretty good, yeah, it's, but... It's awesome against the uh, Druid. 
because Druid has no way of dealing with mass creatures unless it's a, uh, unless those have like one HP all, then it's only a swipe or maybe a mind control thing. Well, okay. Well, this ended up really good for uh, Bestie only because he grew, he drew the mini bot. Without mini bot, his board would get like swiped, really efficiently. Mm, well, maybe not super efficiently. There will be one minion left, but yeah. Now you have to drop d double Druid of the Flames, I think. I think you drop Emperor. You think so? The Emperor yeah. dies to everything, and basically that leaves you without anything to trade with the minions. Um, if you play double Druid of the Flame, you kind of say goodbye to the value from the Emperor, and if you go Emperor, you can play Swipe double Druid of the Flame next turn, which is like way more mana efficient. Well, okay, he did something completely different that we were talking both and I don't like that at all. It's either double Druid of the Flame or just Emperor, I guess. I, I would say it's just Emperor, like the only play that would work in this situation. Like now, you don't even need to play Dragon uh, Blackwing Corruptor, you just play Dragon Consort and gain the value. Uh, I don't know what to say. Both what? players are kind of using their mana to do some plays that don't really benefit them they don't think in the long game they think only on the turn mm -hmm, they think that they mm -hmm. can get advantage instantly and they don't calculate uh the benefits of waiting a bit more with some of the cards true well now he has to use the emperor because there's no other play if you use the druid of the claw as a talent as a talent makes no sense so then you have to use the hero power to ping the mini bot most of the time I like Emperor on turn 6. Later than 6 is just inefficient. Well, the only way of gaining the Emperor value when you're playing Druid of the Flames on turn 6, then it's drawing a Ancient of Law on turn 7, so you can draw more cards and then play the Emperor on turn 8. It kind of sucks anyway. Yeah. Because the Black Wind Corruptor trades for the Ancient of Law, like with ease. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, that's a play, I guess. But again, you give your opponent all the tempo in the world to do whatever he wants to. He can play Consort and get another Consort cost reducted. How much will another Drake be if he draws it? Like, to... the Consort will be... Well, it only uh, um it only works on the first Dragon you play, right? So... No, like, he can play Consort next turn for free, and then the other Drake will be also free. So he can play Consort and the other well, Drake. Why for free? Oh, for free? You mean for free mana? Okay, never mind. Yeah, free mana. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, that, that's right. Nothing to say um, about that. As I said, the more he delays the Emperor, the worse it becomes. And I think here you have to play Sylvanas. There's no yeah. question about it. Yeah. When your yeah, opponent has a big board, you have to play Sylvanas. She's really threatening. He will trade the, the Consort into the Sylvanas. And first, he will trade also the Haunted Creeper, right? So he will only get a 1-1 minion for that. Yeah, but is he even gonna trade? Yeah, you're probably gonna trade. I know, this game is probably going to the Paladin. Uh, Paladin, when they play Tyrion versus Druid, is usually game over. Like, the best removal for Tyrion that the Druid has is Keeper of the Grove, and that still leaves the 6-6 body. And it puts you in a bad spot. So Tyrion should be, like, game over. He decides to go for the Druid of the Claw, which is really weird, because... His yeah. board dies to that. And uh, his he can go for Knife Juggler, Consort, Hero Power, I think. Yeah. I like that. What about Knife Juggler Consecration? Uh, mm, doesn't look that great. It's not that mana efficient as Consort is. Chosen uh, Champion? Hmm. Now, you have. To, well, you can. If you get the juggle from the one hunted creeper, then you trade for the Druid of the Claw with your Thrusilver Champion and kill the Druid of the Flame of your Dragon Consult. I think you first play Juggler, you play one monster, you play the Consort, and then you see how it hits, and then you hear a power. You want to give yourself the best odds possible using the hunted creeper on uh, as many. Oh, he should probably play something, I guess. Just do it. Also, he saw one swipe, so the hero power has more value than usual. Oh, he goes for that. Oh. I don't know what to say. Hmm. 
Yeah, I guess anything works. Like, he wins this game no matter what. He gains the tempo from the weapon. Like, it's more tempo than other plays. Because you have, you kind of like, get four free damage uh, next turn without investing any mana. And you don't care about your health. Well, I so... think I think a 5-5 five five is more tempo than a weapon. He can still play the weapon next turn and finish his opponent if he needs to. But, but as I said, it, it you is will have a win five one. You will have a 5-1 on your board and not a 5-3. Uh... Yeah, but here you see your opponent that he already used the swipe, so you're not afraid of swipe. He already used the rough, so you're not afraid of rough. And yeah, maybe you're right. Uh, I like developing the board, usually overplaying weapons. But as I said, in this spot, there's no way the Druid play is going to win. You can just like go AFK for two turns and still win the game. Yeah, and yeah. then combo happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit exaggerating, but Tyrion is just too good here. Yeah. You don't even trade that. You, you Why can't. not? You do. You do. You can. Because the Divine Shield has more value than a 2 HP minion. Yeah, you're probably right. Bo both plays are correct. He played one Keeper already, so... Going for phase gives you enough damage to win the turn next turn, to win the game next turn with... Uh, oh yeah, maybe that's more goals. important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you have Trusilva and Consecration, so that's 8. Well, we have enough. You have 15 anyways, so you probably trade. I don't know. Trusilva comes hmm. when the empty board is 15. If he... Even if he hero powers. I Sira in a druid. Um maybe it's a meta call for the open tournaments. If he expects everybody else to play super control decks. A druid with Sarah is pretty good. And I don't know. As you can as you see the Emperor stays in the hand all the game because he didn't play it earlier on turn six when he had the option to. Hmm. Uh, there's no mathematical way to survive this. You see that your opponent yeah. needs one damage. So you probably just play Izera and hope for the best. Not even Izera, I think you play Sylvanas. Sylvanas might be better. You might control into Tyrion. The thing is that if your opponent doesn't have anything, let's assume your opponent has like four Wisps in the hand the Paladin player. He can still win with a 50-50 hero power with a Knife Juggler. <laughs> and then he has the four Wisps to get a 50-50. So. Yeah, I just wanted to say that the Wisps will be actually okay. <laughs> like, he, he probably has little on board only by summoning any monster at all with a Knife Juggler. So as a Druid, I don't know if there's anything you can do. Now Pesty applies the little. And Gently we're going to game to yeah, gently. To the face. And we are going to the game uh, number two. Let's see if Xerxes decides to keep the Druid with Izera, maybe to counter the Priest. You, 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 you beat Priest with that, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I think you almost always beat Priest. Well, we're kind of exaggerating anyway, but uh, <laughs> I really like to play Druid and the Priest because most of the time it's just... Uh, well, really... What do you think if the Priest goes mind control on, on your Izera? Are you still winning? <laughs> yeah, that might be really bad. <laughs> Worse. Uh, well, mm. If he plays Icera, do you think he plays Blackwing Technicians? No, that makes no sense. Why would he play Druid of Flames then? <laughs> right. Mm. Yeah, it's a really weird and sketchy deck. Did Personally, you... I wouldn't run any Druid of the Flame or Izera. I would just go for the standard Druid that everybody is playing in the high ranks of the ladder. I mm -hmm. wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe playing with Faces Manipulator. I saw Mister Yagut yeah, playing with Faces Faces Manipulator at number one. Faces is a really good card and a cool card also. Like, it allows you to do such shenanigans. Like, you can't usually see that kind of uh, plays unless there's an unstable portal happening. Yeah. Uh, we jump into the game and we see Pesty playing the midrange hunter and Sorcy deciding to keep his druid that also has Senjin. What do you say about wow. that loader? I have no idea what he, he cut. Like, he plays Druid of the Flames instead of the next. That's that's pretty obvious, right? So He, he cut, cut Shredders for Sanjin. Yeah, I guess so. And so then 
that seems to be trend with the open qualifiers, right? You just go for the more safer, I mean, the, the safest possible minions. <laughs> like, well, it's not really safe. I prefer to have four free than a three five with taunt. Like, well, it, it's be better. It's better against face hunters, that's for sure. But <laughs> that's that's actually on the only thing that can happen. Maybe kind of against mech mages, but. Yeah. Well, there, there is a problem w with building your deck like that, and the problem is the following. Uh, you put Sengins and do it of the Flames to beat Agro. You put Zombie Chows to beat Agro, and then you have Izera. Izera sucks versus Agro. The, if you make your deck to beat both Agro and Control, you're probably going to end up losing to both Agro and Control, and then getting destroyed by mid-range decks. And we see Pesty playing mid-range Hunter and Ooh, Dragon Paladin. Breaks. And Dragon Paladin, yeah. Uh, mid-range Hunter is like... Well, having Volcanic Drakes might not be mid-range Hunter, I don't know. Let's call it Pesty Hunter. Well, the Volcanic Drake makes sense with Snake Trap, that's for sure, but... Makes sense with uh, Unleash the Hounds. He got yeah. painted into the Snake Trap! Oh, it's freezing. Does the but, Snake Trap what, also what, apply? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted to ask. I think it is. It, it did, because you have Ooh. a swipe, so you want to, to check for both, and then you can just swipe. Why didn't you play swipe? What? <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? I don't know. Like, I, I think he just didn't first? see the animations. I, I don't think he saw the animations. Well, that's GG. <laughs> that's not, there's nothing you can do about the hunter drawing three cards. And playing the Volcanic Drake. Oh, God. Really? Is yeah, he enough? can. He, he kills the oh, slime. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 I forgot about the, um, I forgot about the, the slime. This is insane. Uh, well, that's, that's GG. There's no way you can now win. <laughs> BGH. You have uh, to. No, you have to. Wait. Not, not swiping that was really sketchy. Not swiping that was probably weird. More uh, than weird. I guess, I guess it was game losing. But now you have to kill the. Do you have to kill the Cult Master? Do you even care? Like he drawed so many cards, there's no difference. I think you. Again, you lost anyways, whatever you do. Yeah. So wait, who's who? Um, Hunter is Xorxy? No, 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 no. Druid is uh, Xorxy, right? He kept... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Pest is Hunter. So, I guess... Um, hmm. That's game. Seven damage to the dome. With a one mana minion. Seems balanced. <laughs> the Bukim Hunter can trade, though. No, no, and... don't don't kill it first. Play the Bukim Hunter. No! <laughs> And now it will be funny if he plays the BGH. What? I think. I know. I, I think. Either. I think he just got like uh, nerves. The tension just got to him. Yeah. Too too much pressure. As I said, like bringing both Cassidy is not easy for an upper player tournament. Yeah. But that's the way you miss your chance to become a professional player. Hmm. I don't really agree with many things in the Druid deck and with many plays. Pesty in, instead has. Two really interesting decks that he played yeah. really well, I think. And there's a Sea Giant too. Yeah, he applied a lot of pressure. He knew what decks he should use against open qualifier players that might get nervous against him because mm -hmm. he's a more non player. And he managed to win. That Snake Trap Bait just won him the game. Did Xorski go AFK? I think he's probably no. not happy at the moment. I, I would definitely be not. I would definitely be not happy after this series. Well, it was all because he didn't swipe first on ten four. Like that was really perfect yeah, on ten five. I mean, yep, that was like the perfect swipe. He decided to play the Belcher, which was like really weird. Oh, and the bombs kind of wrecked him too. Well, you know, there's no big difference. You're at eight mana anyway. Little from Pesty. He wanted to BM yeah. a bit with Animal Companion. Not successful, the Misha is like blocking his chance at the BM. He's uh, getting rid of the bad luck now because Misha was the only one that didn't give instant lethal. Well, that was fast and furious. What do you think of the series? I think one of the players was not thinking slow enough. If you, th that sounds weird, but. I think that's important, like, you want to take your time and you want to slow down a little, 
don't you, you you don't want to rush the things that's going on in the game and you want to see what's going on and i think you're, you're right with the animation he just attacked the minion and when the freezing drop went off he was like oh, okay never mind and i just played minion afterwards because he didn't think about the second trap and that yeah. was a snake trap and it activated both it was like okay that's still not bad I should have played the swipe, but that's still not bad. And then there was the cult master that actually pushed through everything. And the, you know, the Leok was also important. <laughs> well, well, first of all, forget about that. Al. <laughs> first of all, I don't think you play Belcher when you can lose the Belcher to the board. So I definitely think it's a mistake because of the animations. Like he triggered the attack into the whatever it was. He saw the freezing trap, and it, then he was like, okay, I just play Belcher now. He played Belcher. And then he realized, oh, he has snake trap. Oh, I just yeah. lost the series. Yeah. Well, okay, <laughs> we'll be going into a three minute break, so we'll be right back. It's like one commercial. So see you, see you uh, after that. 